All right. I'd like to thank everyone today for uh, joining us today on the new discovery approach, uh, a webinar here from Inlight Software. I'm fortunate today we have Gary Paquette who will be joining us, and I'm Mark Gatos. So if we can move to the next slide. Um, today we're going to be talking about discovery uh, specifically. We're going to talk about, I'll, I'll give a quick introduction to Inlight, and then we'll turn it over to Gary Paquette. The latest solution in the Inlight uh, suite of solutions is uh, our Inlight Discovery product. And so we're going to focus about the, sort of the latest technology for discovery. And so we're fortunate today to have uh, Gary Paquette, who is formerly of In Control Technology, uh, a solution we acquired at Inlight. And so he's going to be talking about sort of the new level of technology, the state of the art in discovery. And uh, my name is Mark Gatos. I'm the CMO here at Inlight. As I said, I'll just do a quick introduction to Inlight for those of you that may not be familiar, and then I'll pass it over to Gary. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit them, uh, and we will try to get to them during this uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them in the chat, and we'll try to get to them uh, all during the webinar. If we don't get to them during the webinar, uh, we will get to them after. We try to run a pretty tight webinar. We try to do it within 30 minutes uh, presentation and Q&A, so we move pretty quickly. Most people are thankful for us to do that. Next slide, please. So an overview of Inlight. Uh, uh, Inlight is a software company that was founded in 2004. We have offices uh, around the world. Uh, we help companies with their physical computing infrastructure, right? So things like racks and servers and cabling and power and environmental. So everything to do with sort of the physical elements. Um, we are recognized as the industry leader in this space. We are solely focused on what is called data center infrastructure management. We help companies manage computing infrastructure, whether it's in their data center, whether that those assets are in their data center, it's in co-location facility, managed services facilities. We help them with their physical uh, infrastructure. And we are in the ninth generation of our technology. And we are very proud of the fact that we have a 98% customer retention rate. We have customers across a broad set of verticals. Here's just a sample of some of our customers that are financial services, federal government, high tech, telecom, utility, consumer. But what they, these companies all have in common is they use us to manage their physical assets, to manage the physical elements within uh, the computing infrastructure. And uh, the thing I like to say is we have some of the largest, most valuable companies in the world using us. And we also have companies as small as 25 racks that may be using our technology. So it's a broad swath of companies. It's companies who really want to increase the efficiency and reduce the cost of managing that th those physical assets. Next slide, please. And so, Enlight has really four core products. We have Energy Optimizer, which is focused on power, uh, thermal information. We have Enterprise Edition, which is traditional Enlight, which helps manage physical assets, the racks, the servers, the cabling, all the physical elements. So think of it as the physical elements and then Energy Optimizer is that environment around it. System utilization monitoring is good drilling into those assets and seeing CPU performance, so you can identify performance issues, you can identify zombie servers. But today we're gonna to be focusing on our fourth and newest solution, Inlight Discovery. And so Gary's gonna take us through what does that mean? A lot of folks know what discovery is, but what does it mean with the latest level of technology? What kind of use cases can we solve? And so we're gonna be focusing today over on that solution on the right, Discovery. And if you move to um, the next slide, please. Inlight is proud of the fact that we have the broadest set of functionality. We support what in the data center what we call from dock to decom. It's the entire life asset life cycle. So from when assets roll in the back dock, we can help companies place them, determine where they go, a punch list of things that have to be done, what uh, network it gets tied into, what power it gets, those assets get tied into managing a myriad of different questions that come up regarding monitoring and alarming, business intelligence, managing workflow, migrations and consolidation. There are a ton of things, depending on your organization, what you wanna manage. We facilitate all these types of processes. 
As I said, today we're going to be focusing on discovery, but again, we provide an entire suite that supports all the life uh, the entire asset lifecycle with inside the data center. And the next slide um, is really there to sort of do a picture is worth a thousand words. When I talk about managing physical assets, people are sort of, well, what does it mean? And when we show visuals, usually people get a better idea, right? You get the rack view, you get workflow management. Down the lower left, we have power and environmental monitoring happening there, uh, cabling schematics, 3D rack view, the floor view. Uh, there's tons of asset and capacity planning that goes on, cutting and slicing and dicing the data by business unit, by type of assets, by amount of resources, by projected usage. There's a lot that goes into the solution. These are just some sample screenshots to give you an idea of what those physical assets are we manage. So again, there's a lot to the Enlight solution, but today we're gonna to be focusing on discovery. And so I am gonna turn it over to Gary. Gary, why don't you uh, take it away from here? Thank you, Mark. So what I'm going to go through is everything that has to do with the IT discovery and the ability to be able to capture information within your, within your own infrastructure. So what are the IT challenges today? Well, one, there's so many tools out there. There's spreadsheets. There's all kinds of methods and ways and walking around that makes it quite uh, close to impossible to manage your applications, manage your equipment, manage all of the IT infrastructure as a whole within a consolidated view. So one of the things that we want to be able to address uh, for that challenge is how do we actually see a single view into everything and get all of the information that's required for you to be able to make good business decisions along, along the way. The other challenge that IT has is the management of uh, software licenses and entitlements. So how do we capture that? How is it related back to the systems? How do we see which patch level or build level they're at? Also, from an entitlement perspective, how do you stay compliant to uh, uh, what is required from the vendor? And also, what do you do if you get into a, a DSA audit or a vendor audit? and be able to get yourself out of that uh, predicament within a short period of time. The other important side also is dealing with security and accountability. Uh, for every customer we go into, and we understand this is a big problem for everybody on this call, is what you, there are things that you do know about. The biggest problem and fear that everybody has is what's unknown out there what's grown organically, what's uh, people introduced in, inside the environment of the infrastructure. Uh, this way you can lock things down from inbound uh, information, but also not only getting broken into, but how do you get broken out of. Also finding uh, instances of devices that were supposed to be retired and also help you as you're growing as an organization during uh, mergers and acquisitions, how do you go capture the data of those infrastructures that you're acquiring. So usually they do uh, business due diligence, they all often do financial due diligence. Uh, now you can actually do a technology due diligence during, during that phase. Uh, the same, at the same time, we want to be as, le as less intrusive as possible within your infrastructure. So here's an opportunity to get a solution that will adapt to your environment versus getting your environment to adapt to the solution. Another big problem that uh, customers keep on coming and asking us about is how do I document everything I have from a disaster recovery perspective, from an insurance perspective, from a backup perspective. Here's your opportunity to finally document everything that you have and provide all of the ITS and intelligence that you need around your own infrastructure key to being able to be operational. Uh, we had customers during Sandy as an example where their data centers got completely wiped out. They restored the database and were able to generate reports with everything from the operating system, configuration, software services, applications, uh, fully listed within a very short period of time. So the discovery uh, uh, use cases. So one of the big things from an asset tracking perspective is not being uh, not having to install anything on any of the devices so that way we can pick up what's changing and what's moving around within 
your infrastructure. Uh, we want to be able to uh, also have visibility to unknown networks. We want to be able to have the visibility on improving the quality of the data that you get from the devices. Now, this is from the hardware aspect. This is also from software configuration, applications, and services being delivered uh, by, uh, by the solution set. We want to be able to do it in a very quick and efficient way. So this way, we are not waiting months from the time that the solution is installed to start actually using the data for business purposes or for special projects. The, the faster time of deployment is actually drives, drives down the cost of ownership of, of the application and the service that we're delivering to you as an application within your infrastructure. Uh, the other thing is from an efficiency perspective, uh, we find on a regular basis where we will run our technology and we'll find devices that were supposed to be retired or actually pulled out of the environment it becomes a security risk. Uh, we want to be able to do data center uh, consolidations. We have customers that went from 39 data centers to 17. How do you actually monitor the milestones and things coming down and things coming up? And this is also exists within the physical and the virtual world. So we can see the progression. You can see the milestones, especially if you're outsourcing. This is a great opportunity to, to uh, have a piece of technology do the work for you to be able to monitor every step along the way. Uh, if you're doing to take the technology assessments, if you're looking to go with single vendor on your desktops as an example, or if you're going from one operating system to the next, uh, we do this often with XP to Windows 10 as an example, or Server 2003 to 2012 or 2016, this was able to actually, one, find what you had in your infrastructure at the same time be able to see the progression over to the new operating systems or platforms. The other opportunity too is in, in a true DSIM model, uh, you want to be able to see how and, uh, and reconcile everything that we found to what's on your floor plan, what's inside the racks, and have that location information uh, at, the, at your fingertips. Then you need to be able to migrate that over to your financial records, which completes the DCIM lifecycle from the power meter all the way to your financial system is we can reconcile, uh, reconcile this up against your ERP system. So SAP, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle Financials, et cetera. So now you can see what your uh, physical assets are in, in, uh, in conjunction with what is reported on your book. So it helps from a compliance perspective, uh, from Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, and also, you're, you don't want to be able to misrepresent what you physically have within your environment. So that way, all of the reconciliation is done for you. On the security side, we can take a look at your network devices. We can take a look at, at how your infrastructure is set up. We can do the OSI Layer 2 and Layer 3 topology. So what's the physical connectivity between those devices? So we can go from your switch down downstream to your end nodes and see how that is physically connected uh, over the wire. Uh, we can take a look at configuration. So in other words, if you have some services on the system, you know, we've all heard about uh, software being uh, problematic within the infrastructure. So we want to be able to identify those services running in your environment, which version is running. So that way you can plan better from uh, when there is a security release uh, or security patch, you can check your own infrastructure to see if you're part of that problem or if you already have a solution in place uh, to be able to address that. When new things are coming online, this will actually identify them for you. So as you introduce new things for you, since it's agentless uh, and also multi-protocol and platform and operating system independent, whatever gets connected to your infrastructure on, uh, on your network will actually collect for you. So I'll give you a couple of examples. We had one customer where for years they hadn't upgraded any of the CAD, CAD or IOSs uh, on their Cisco equipment. So this was a security uh, risk. I didn't have any updates on, on that side. Once we installed the, the solution, we were able to identify that for the customer, and then they were able to put a, a project in place to be able to make sure everything was upgraded. Because often the focus is either on the servers or on the desktop, we take a look at it as a full infrastructure. So what are customers experiencing? So often the biggest problem that they have is trying to figure out what they have and what is it being used for. So a classic example is where we find the virtual machines, the host themselves. 
So regardless of, of the technology being used, let's say a hypervisor from Microsoft or VMware as an example, we'll find 30 different uh, uh, VM guests installed on it. 15 of them are turned off, but they occupy licenses. There's a cost involved in doing it. There's storage. We're trying to identify everything that's in your infrastructure. So either on or off, we'll be able to identify that for you. Once you can decommission that or you can uh, remove that from your infrastructure, you can start reducing your maintenance costs. You can't get back the money that you spent on the original licenses or you can redeploy them for uh, a different use or a different purpose within your organization. So when you start taking a look at the infrastructure as a whole, you start understanding a little bit better what you have, how is it being used, or what is it being used for, and seeing the services that are being delivered across the, uh, across, across the enterprise. So what is the discovery solution? From a, from a technology perspective, we're primarily an agentless solution. We were one of the first agentless solutions out in the industry. So we have decades of experience in, in being able to do this. For us, every operating system is included within the solution. Uh, again, since we're multi-protocol, this is really important because uh, if you don't support every protocol or have your own protocols in place, you'll be missing equipment. And for us, not being able to capture everything within the infrastructure becomes a security issue. So we want to make sure that, one, we were able to find everything. Once we found it, then we'll perform an inventory on those devices. So from Linux to Unix to Macintosh to Windows to your switches, routers, uh, managed power supplies, uh, PDUs, uh, battery backup units, your network printers, your desktops, your Windows tablets, et cetera. We will walk your infrastructure based on how it's configured, and it will collect all the information for you. And again, like I was saying before, we'll pick up the hardware, the configuration, the software, the services and applications configured on that, and link that back to the users. So that way at the desktop level, you know who's using what, uh, at all times, and then we can generate missing in action reports where the devices have not been seen for a period of time. We can report that back to you, and you can uh, do some analysis on where those devices have landed. Uh, we had one customer, as an example, that they said that they couldn't account for 10% of their desktop assets or laptops. Um, now, you have to understand, they have 100,000 assets, which means they couldn't account for 10,000 devices. They're a large automotive, uh, automotive manufacturer. So their fear factor was plans for a new vehicle coming out was actually in the competitor's hands. So this gave them a, a way to actually verify and validate where everything was within the infrastructure, even if it moved. Um, at the same time, the agentless discovery, and the nice thing with that is since you don't have to install anything, it reduces your security risks. And at the same time, it allows us to do worldwide scanning of your infrastructure uh, without having to install uh, the, any of the software in other locations. So we can go from one location, go over the WAN, and cover the world for you. Then we have uh, capabilities of our, with our connectors. So we can connect to third-party applications. We can also connect to your internal system. So that way you can create a link of people, places, and things. And that's the, the footholder for all IT asset management is the ability to be able to create the relationship in an automatic and, uh, way, so that way you understand where things are, who's using it, and the purpose for that device and what does it look like. Software asset management always comes up, and this is from the operating system side all the way down to your applications. So now you can actually see the entitlements, and from the entitlement side, you know who is authorized to use the applications, and we can actually provide you with uh, discrepancies where you can see your shortfalls from a cost perspective, <laughs> Uh, multi-currency capabilities, so that way you can always ensure that if you're going to be in an audit situation, you can see the reports um, and adjust accordingly within your infra infrastructure. Uh, normalizing the data. Now, a lot of our, our technology uh, that you've probably used in the past, things come back as codes, things that are more technical than they need to be. So what we do is we have a, an AI engine uh, which takes care of what we call the business logic technology. And it, it interprets all the information coming back and it normalizes it for you. And what does that mean? Well, if it comes back as a code, you know, it says this is a, a certain type of processor, we'll actually identify it in plain English, 
So that way you are making business decisions on something that you understand versus what a technical person might understand. So it's a great way to be able to, uh, to better understand your infrastructure and create reports in a way that are more logical. The, the solution can also be installed to do a one-time assessment. So let's say you're in a, in a situation where you need to know real quick from a compliancy perspective, from a, a project perspective, or also from an audit perspective, we can install this technology in a, in a very short period of time and let it run for a, a couple of weeks, provide all of the information for you, and then you can uh, generate the reports that you need and validate the data. And if needed, we can take the one-time assessment and convert that over to uh, a full implementation if, uh, if it's performing to, to what you need and you need that ongoing. Cybersecurity is great. Uh, like I say, from a, a patch management perspective, now we don't do the patch management, but we can actually tell you where things are not up to a certain, to a certain level. We can even report back also on devices that don't have um, antivirus software, as an example, which revision is it, uh, which client is it using, to how is it configured, what services it's delivering. Has somebody installed something that's non-authorized within your infrastructure? And this is key. We have customers say, okay, somebody installed a, a browser, as an example, that uh, is non-authorized. So, well, we can report on that. We can even alert on that for you. So that way we can feed that information to a workflow engine that's on your service management side, create the incident, and then uh, you can take uh, uh, corrective action as you go along. Uh, server utilization, at the same time, we can take a look at all of the metrics uh, from a, uh, a CPU perspective is one, and a lot of them do that. But we can also take a look at slices of time from I.O. So what is, the, is the I.O. on the drives uh, very high on this device? Is it memory intensive? Is it network intensive? So when we take a look at server utilization, it's across the board. So that way you've got all the metrics to be able to determine uh, the utilization and the performance of the equipment that's being used. Now, that can happen on the physical device side, and it can also happen on the virtual side. Uh, the system is completely uh, configurable to allow other users within your organization have view rights or different roles within your organization. So the nice thing is, is that you can manage the system and report off of it, but also give access to, let's say, department heads to be able to audit their own equipment for you and help through the process. The big advantage of all of this is, especially when you give access to other uh, individuals or, or departments or teams within your organization, they know now that everything is being monitored and not monitored from a live uh, real-time perspective, but monitored from data being captured within your infrastructure. And it really helps people understand that since all of this information is being gathered, they're a lot more cautious on what they do with corporate assets. There's a full-blown reporting engine into it. We have an advanced search engine, which allows you to do a, a query by example or a search by example, plain English text into, into specific parts of the application. You can see what's going on your, in your organization, and we have a, a large list of pre-built reports within the system where we can generate anything from hardware, software, assessments, uh, um, uh, logistical issues. If you're having issues within uh, your infrastructure for, with DNS, et cetera, we can actually report that for you with pre-built reports. So the benefits, the, the improved accuracy in the, the, uh, the way we simplify implementing the technologies, typically within the first day or two that the, the technology is put in place within your infrastructure, you'll start seeing data roll in. And that was a, a, one of the design challenges at the beginning was this could not be a six-month implementation where it basically never ends. So once we designed the technology, and put it in place, we wanted to be uh, able to, one, pick up any of the platforms, two, once it uh, got implemented and configured, we would capture all the information you wanted, and then you can make it grow within your organization. So you can say, okay, I want to be able to do either a specific location or specific subnets, and then let it grow within your environment and let that scope come up. That information comes up in a real quick way, uh, and for you to be able to start reporting off of it. So again, uh, the, the simplicity of, of looking at the technology 
was uh, done in a way where we took care of all the complex tasks for you in the back end. We basically, or the application would ask you some specific questions. You configured it, you uh, started it, and then it will actually do all the magic for you. Uh, it also helps you from uh, doing any of your unrecorded changes. Again, if you have a change management in place, this can validate your changes. Uh, if you're doing software upgrades or somebody's put installing something, we can actually feed that over as a change. Um, we become the conscience to your CMDB, as an example. So we provide the CIs. As things are dynamically changing within your infrastructure, we will send those changes over as a CI to your CMDB, keeping that data fresh. And now you've got an evergreen system on all devices uh, within your infrastructure. We want to be able to provide a consolidated view. So again, uh, most of the time to be able to perform the end result of discovery, you would need two, three, four different pieces of technology. So you needed something for the networking side, for the server side, for the uh, Linux side, for our Windows. Now you've got everything in one consolidated view, one piece of technology, configure it once, learn it once, and generate your reports from a, from a single uh, trusted data source. The security teams like it because, again, it's not intrusive to your environment, and we can take that offline, but we provide the guidelines based on the vendors and the operating system security platforms. We adapt a solution to that, and then you can enhance how that's going to work within your own infrastructure. For, exec for being able to do any kind of special projects, uh, if you're moving up from one location to another, if you're uh, consolidating, if you're doing M&As like I was saying before, this now becomes your uh, asset integrity system from the per perspective that we can capture all this in one location. Um, the other parts too is, is a lot of the compliance now. So we're seeing it on the EU side, we're seeing it in the US, we're seeing it uh, in, in other parts of the world in Canada also where compliance is a big issue and you need to report off of it. And the last thing you need to do is start stitching multiple systems together to generate these reports. So we're enhancing our reports pre-built reports to be able to adapt to the requirements for these, uh, these new compliance uh, regulatory and um, uh, financial reasons. So all of that is in one system. And we share that system throughout the Enlight platform. Mark, I'll uh, throw over to you all for right. the... Uh, Q and A and resources. Q and A. Well, it's great. We've we've had a bunch of questions come in. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to them all, but let's start rolling them out. So, we just had a, a question come in from Doug. I'm going to throw my own question on. When I first heard about uh, the technology, I had a questions, but I'll roll it into Doug has a question. What is the best practice for scanning my data center? How often, and can I do it all at once? And on top of that, can you answer sort of how you don't how we don't overwhelm uh, the network, number one, and number two, how is it you don't see everything out on the internet? So all related to sort of how often you scan and, and throttling and so forth. That's a great question. Typically what we've seen, and, and like I say, most of the, the team that came over that provided the discovery technology has been doing this for decades. Um, so one of the things that we discovered is for most data centers, if there's no special projects involved, the frequency uh, that we normally set from a best practices perspective is a seven day cycle. So that way it allows us to be able to capture the information, the, uh, all of the configuration. Now, again, if there is a special needs or a special project that you're dealing with, then you can set that to any frequency that you want. And we don't overwhelm the system or the database. So from a database perspective, we will only track the changes or the deltas. So once we see the system for the first time, we'll snapshot it, and then we'll just track the differences from there so you can see historically what did it look like the first time we saw it and how did it change over its life cycle. So that's one thing that we do to lighten up the load. From the networking side, we've done a lot of benchmarking with third-party uh, uh, customers, and what we've done is we've of put in some auto throttling and because it's a big question everybody comes up with with agent lists especially from uh, competitors that were not agent lists they had to find a reason so with our our throttling capabilities we're taking a look at our own noise on the network so we need to stay, stay under the intrusion detection systems the ids's and from there 
we can scan your environment where it's non-intrusive to your infrastructure. In fact, most people don't even know what they're being scanned and collect all the information and put it inside the repository. Uh, did I miss anything, Mark? I think you got it all. So the next question is, I hope I pronounced his name right, Safala. Uh, has a question, what protocols are available to discover the assets? BACnet, TCP, IP, SNMP. So there you go, Gary. Good question. Yeah, uh, we are multi-protocol. So there's a couple of things that we do on, and it, it, again, it's platform dependent, and we do have a matrix that we can share down the road with you. Uh, so SNMP v1, v2, v3 is, is, is included. We can also do WMI. If uh, WMI is not available, we can also use the SM BIOS uh, directly on Linux and Windows-based platforms. The uh, other protocols that we support is we do a TCP IP stack header trace within it, so that way we can identify during the discovery phase what the device is. Um, on the inventory side, we also have our own proprietary protocol called the Device Inspector, so it allows us on Windows and Linux platforms to be able to extract all the information even though the instrumentation on the target device is turned off. We su uh, support Telnet and SSH. Uh, we support uh, a lot of the newer Bisbee example for IoT devices. Uh, so w there's approximately 13 protocols that are supported in the system plus our own proprietary ones. And the other thing, if you need to extend it, the, uh, the discovery technology is completely extendable to your environment to do way beyond what we provide out of the box. So uh, there is a, a CLIs or scripting capabilities, uh, command line capabilities based on the target. So if you're looking for something exceptionally specific on a platform or on a type of device, the scanner will actually perform that action for you, collect the data and bring it back into the, into the database. So that's how we can do Linux mid-range equipment, uh, Unix, Windows, Macintosh, uh, all of the platforms from the uh, switches, uh, storage devices, um, power backup, power and, and backup units, et cetera. Okay, thanks. Great, great answer there, Gary. We've gone over time. We've get, we're not gonna get to all the questions. I'll take one more here, which is from Peter. Can you elaborate on how Enlight's discovery can help with disaster recovery? Good question. The, the disaster recovery perspective is one of the key components a lot of our customers uh, are looking for. And that's because uh, a lot of the information is often tracked, as you guys know, on a spreadsheet or on a Post-it um, uh, or in three or four different solutions. So what we do is be able to consolidate and document uh, everything within your infrastructure. And like I say, the documentation part is really important. So if you're we do things by location, as an example, or by subnet, depending on how you're, you're, you want to get it set up within your infrastructure. Then we collect all of the hardware information, you know, to, this, to the serial numbers, all electronically, uh, down to the modules within the devices, down to the serial numbers there. How is it configured? What services it's delivering? The software and applications installed on it. So now you've got a complete snapshot of everything within that environment based on location and what it's being used for. Awesome. And with one, okay, that's, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, Gary. Thanks for the answer, uh, for that answer. As I said, we didn't get to all the questions, so we will get back to everybody independently. We will answer all the questions that have come in. Uh, also look for an email. We will be sending out this recording back to, uh, to everyone who registered for the webinar, you'll we'll send a, a link to the recording. And so I wanna thank all of you for the time uh, you spent with us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. And thank you, Gary Paquette, for joining us on this discovery webinar. Thanks everyone, and I'm gonna take down this webinar. Thank you. <laughs>